Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at the free radical substitution of alkanes. We're going to talk about what free radical substitution actually is, the different steps in the mechanism for such reactions between alkanes and halogens, and look at how further substitution products can be formed. Before we talk in detail about the reaction and mechanism steps, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Alkanes are a type of saturated hydrocarbon made up of only carbon and hydrogen atoms with the general formula CnH2n plus 2. All carbon atoms in an alkane molecule are held together by single covalent bonds. Halogenoalkanes, also called haloalkanes, are a group of compounds that contain an alkyl group, carbon and hydrogen chain, bonded to a halogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine or iodine. In simple terms, they are like an alkane where a halogen has taken the place of a hydrogen. Homolytic and heterolytic fission describe the breaking of a covalent bond between two atoms. In homolytic fission, each bonded atom takes one of the bonding electrons, ending up with an unpaired electron. Highly reactive species called free radicals are produced and can be recognised by the use of a large dot, representing an unpaired electron. A substitution reaction is where one group or atom in a molecule is swapped for another group. Recap done? Let's go! Alkanes can undergo substitution reactions with chlorine and bromine in the presence of UV light, in what are called free radical substitution reactions. Alkanes generally have a low reactivity and don't readily react with many things at all in organic chemistry. In free radical substitution reactions, however, halogen radicals are produced that are themselves so reactive they can force an alkane to react. To form a chlorine or bromine radical, ultraviolet or UV light is used. The ultraviolet light can provide just the right amount of energy needed to homolytically break the covalent bond in a chlorine or bromine molecule, producing two radicals. These radicals are incredibly reactive and can end up being substituted into an alkane molecule, forming a halogenoalkane and hydrogen halide. For example, a chlorine molecule, Cl2, breaks apart to form two chlorine radicals and then reacts with methane to form chloromethane and hydrogen chloride. In the real world, these reactions are very messy due to the high reactivity of radicals and a chain reaction forms. Other products get made and further substitution reactions can occur, making the reactions very hard to control. The mechanism that occurs for these substitution reactions can be broken down into three steps or stages. Initiation, propagation and termination. The initiation step is the formation of the free radical. In other words, the halogen molecule undergoing homolytic fission in the presence of UV light. Propagation steps describe the coming together of a free radical and non-radical, always producing a new free radical and a non-radical molecule. Free radicals produced in propagation steps can then go on to react with another non-radical, which would also then produce another radical, and so on, meaning these propagation steps lead to a chain reaction that goes on and on. Termination steps describe the coming together of two free radicals to form a non-radical neutral molecule. As two radicals each have an unpaired electron, as they come together, the two unpaired electrons form a pair and make a covalent bond. They are no longer unpaired electrons, meaning the reaction stops at this point. The chain reaction ends. These steps can seem quite daunting at first. Let's have a look at the mechanism for chlorine reacting with methane to see them in action. First, the covalent bond in a chlorine molecule has to break homolytically and the energy needed is provided by ultraviolet light. Each chlorine atom gets an unpaired electron and two chlorine radicals are produced. This is the initiation step. We are creating radicals from a non-radical molecule. A chlorine radical can now react with methane and will form hydrogen chloride, a non-radical. This will leave an unpaired electron on a CH3 group, making what is called a methyl radical. 
the methyl radical can then react with chlorine molecules, Cl2, to form chloromethane, a non radical, and a chlorine radical is produced as well. These are both propagation reactions as a radical species has reacted with a non radical species to form a new radical. Finally, the two radical species can combine together to form a stable non radical molecule in a termination step. There are several possibilities for this. Two chlorine radicals can combine together to reform a chlorine molecule, Cl2. A chlorine radical and a methyl radical can combine together to form a chloromethane molecule, CH3Cl. And finally, two methyl radicals can combine together to form ethane, CH3CH3. For chloromethane, a chlorine group has been substituted for a hydrogen in the original methane, making this a substitution reaction. As a free radical started the reaction, it is described as free radical substitution. As we've seen, however, chloromethane isn't the only product formed in the reaction. The propagation steps in the mechanism just outlined show us how these reactions can get pretty intense and go on for a long time, a chain reaction process. There is also nothing stopping another chlorine radical reacting with a molecule of chloromethane just formed. This would then produce a chloromethyl radical that can go on and react just like a methyl radical, ultimately forming dichloromethane. But why stop there? Trichloro and tetrachloromethane can also be formed as this dichloromethane reacts with another chlorine radical and so on. It all gets a bit crazy. At this level, don't panic too much. You are usually just asked to outline the mechanism and steps for one substitution and be aware that further substitutions can occur, just like what we've just gone through. These extra products formed and the formation of a longer chain alkane, ethane in our example, mean that free radical substitution isn't a very effective way of making chloro or bromo alkanes in industry, as there is such little control over the reaction and a complete mixture of substances get formed. For longer chain alkanes, there is also no control over where the substitution will occur. For example, a chloro or bromo group could end up on carbon 1 or carbon 2 if propane underwent free radical substitution. So, to summarise, alkanes can undergo substitution reactions with chlorine and bromine in the presence of UV light, forming a halogenoalkane and hydrogen halide. Chlorine or bromine molecules break apart by homolytic fission and the radicals formed react with an alkane in a free radical substitution reaction. Ultraviolet or UV light conditions are needed to provide the energy to homolytically break the bond in the halogen and make sure each bonded atom ends up with one unpaired electron. The reaction mechanism occurs in a series of steps described as initiation, propagation and termination. Initiation is the formation of the chlorine or bromine radical by homolytic fission. Propagation is the reaction between a radical and a non-radical producing a new molecule and a new radical. A halogen radical can react with an alkane forming an alkyl radical and hydrogen halide, and an alkyl radical already formed can react with a halogen molecule to form a halogenoalkane and halogen radical. The propagation steps of the reaction can just keep going on and on, making it a chain reaction or process. Termination is the combining of two radicals to form a non-radical, and this ends the chain reaction. Two halogen radicals can combine to form a halogen molecule. An alkyl radical can combine with a halogen radical to form a halogenoalkane. And two alkyl radicals can combine together to form a longer chain alkane. Free radical reactions are messy and other products are always formed. There is no control over the position a halogen gets substituted into within the alkane and further substitution reactions are possible, leading to di, tri and tetra chloro or bromo alkanes. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.